give you all the honor. We're going to give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a clap offering. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know that we come today, this is a what they call the, the Hill Wednesday. You know, and and uh, there's a lot of people that are going through the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right when they get to Wednesday. Hey, some are start rolling backwards. But we gotta keep on pushing. We gotta keep on pressing. We gotta keep on put it in an extra drive. Amen. Put it in four wheel drive. Amen. Hallelujah. Put that thing in low and put your. Uh, I don't have four wheel drive, but I have that traction. And I tell you, man, that traction is traction. That they will hug the dirt and will roll you out at whatever you're at. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Ghost is our traction. Amen. So it don't matter what roll you in. doesn't matter how loose and soft it is. It, it, it doesn't matter how that tire, you can't see only but half of the rim, but that tire never stops turning. You see, you can't let up the gas. Amen. You can't let up the gas when you are involved, hallelujah, yourself, hallelujah, in the ministry when you're involved yourself, hallelujah, walking with Christ Jesus, you cannot let up the gas. The gas got to keep on going, amen, hallelujah. It, it might turn a little swivel, it might get a little tough, amen, hallelujah, but eventually you're going to get solid ground. And you're going to get out of that soft sand. You're going to get out of that, that, that rough mud, amen, hallelujah. And in situations in our life that we go through every single day, we go through struggles, we go through hurt, we go through confusion, we go through different things in our lives. Each and one of us go through different things in our lives, even me. And I go through a lot of things. I think about you guys and what you guys are doing. So I got to pray for you guys. Got to pray for myself. Got to pray for my family. And the devil comes and says, hey, guess what? You missed one. No, I didn't. God's got him covered. Because the Bible says that me and my house will be saved. Amen. And we will praise the Lord. So we got to stand in that word. But I wanted to share something with you guys this evening. Amen. That how do we keep on going when the times get tough, when the times get painful, when the times get hurtful, when you think that, 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 that everything is working and, and it's pains coming to your life, hurtful things are coming to your life, hurtful actions are happening and hitting you. How do we get through this? Through prayer. Jesus in red letters taught the disciples, and this is how much he loved us. Because we all know that Jesus is our interceder. Amen? Amen? That the Bible says that he sits to the right hand side of the Father and intercedes for us. He knows that what we're going through, he knows that what's happening, he knows the situation in our life, he knows the complication in our marriage, in our children, in our, in our husband, in our wife, hallelujah, in our workplace, he knows the situation in our bodies, he knows the situation in everything. But over all things, prayer is the most powerful thing. Prayer is the one that keeps us alive. Prayer is the one, is, is that oxygen in our life that keeps us rolling. Amen. When you need an answer, hallelujah, you go to prayer, hallelujah. And then you go to the word, hallelujah. And then Jesus tells you, hallelujah, what you do in your life, hallelujah. And sometimes it's open heart surgery. Sometimes it's open surgery in a part of, of your spiritual life that it hurts, that he tears it up, hallelujah. But after he tears it up, he smooths it with peace and joy. And you come out as a success. 
You ever been to a little surgery where the doctor says, hey, it was good. Everything's all right. You wake up in the other room, and you're like, where am I at? <laughs> where am I at? You know what I mean? Because you're over there, and now you're over here. But see, Jesus is awesome because he puts us in a surgery where we could understand things. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Give Jesus a clap offering. Amen? <laughs> Amen. God is so good. Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will move this evening. You move in your hearts of your people. Move the hearts, Lord Father God. Hallelujah. I pray, Father God, that you would touch the minds. I pray, Father God, that you would touch the sight. I pray, Father God, that you would touch the hearing. Father, I pray, Father God, that you will be the one, Lord, that will speak, Lord. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that you will go through the aisles of, your, uh, of the pews, Lord Father God, and you will go through the aisles, Lord, and touch the hearts of your people. You know their hearts, Lord. You know the pain, Lord. You know the things they're going through. Even though we try to hide it, hallelujah, with a smile. Even though we try to hide it with a different hairdo. Even though we try to hide it with a different clothes or dress or, or suit, hallelujah. But you, my God, know all things. You know everything because you know our heart, you know our mind, you know our soul. Father, and that's what you look at. We thank you, Lord, and today we allow you to come to this place and speak to us as your children, Lord. As you spoke to your disciples, you told them and you warned them. But then you say that whoever believes these are for them too and we believe Lord we're a people that believe my God we're a people that have faith Lord we're a people that push and push and push but we never stop pushing Lord we thank you Lord because your helping hand moves the stone the rock the mountain the obstacles the situations you move them out of the way so today, Father, I thank you that the word will be feeling in our hearts and our souls that will encourage us to keep on walking and pushing and giving you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. You can be seated. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. Amen. Are you excited? All right, because I am. Amen. We're going to go here. Amen. God's so awesome. Amen. We, uh, God is just so beautiful. How many of you heard that what happened in Atlanta? All those kids in the school, all that gunning and all that stuff that's happening right now. One of the most important things that we have to pray for that the United States allows prayer back in the schools. Because, you know, we believers, we protect our children every single day they go to school. We bless them, and we tell God to cover them. We tell God to, to, to be with them, to walk with them, to protect them, and to guide them. Hallelujah. In every situation. But we got to pray and seek God and ask God, Lord, help us, Lord. If you open your Bibles to John chapter 17, we're going to read from, from, from uh, verse 20, and we're going to read to 26, amen, and then we're going to go back, amen. And my reader, amen, Pastor Linda, amen, is going to read for... Uh, and we're going to go from there. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. You, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the 
glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it. That the love which, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Amen. God is good. Amen. He's so awesome, and you know that that God is so awesome that that I'm gonna just read this to you. It says, Lord Jesus, in you I have peace. In the world, I may experience suffering and pain, but I will be of good cheers because you have overcome the world. Amen? You know, that prayer is just so awesome because it's what we go through every single day. He says, I did not pray for those alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. Amen? Jesus prayed to the disciples, asked, before he was speaking, he was talking to the disciples. And, 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 and the topic might say, uh, in your Bible, Jesus prayed for all believers. This contains the disciples, this contains the believers, amen, whoever believes in him, that, that will have Amen, amen, um, a power when they pray. An example that he was saying, pray. But look at what he says right here in 21. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. Amen. So the Father, I don't know, Jesus is telling the Father, praying for us, know, that we will all be together as one. That we will be all together as one, as children, hallelujah, of the living God. As children of the living God that needs to come, hallelujah, closer, hallelujah. And the only, how do we draw closer to Jesus Christ? How do we draw closer to him? By praying, hallelujah, by seeking God, hallelujah. And as we come closer by seeking God, by seeking Jesus, hallelujah, we're going to know the Father. Because that's what Jesus is praying to the Father. That, that we will come, become united, become as unity, become as, as Father, Jesus, as, as the Son of God, and then us as Son, because He has adopted us to His, to his glory. And for us to see the power of God move in our life in prayer. And prayer is a powerful thing. Prayer is a, one of the biggest uh, 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 weapon that we have, amen, hallelujah, that, that, that you could even have for the enemy. Because when you pray, things happen. And if you haven't got to the point, you say, Pastor, I pray, but nothing moves. But you got to pray a little harder. You got to clear your mind because you're praying about McDonald's. You're, play, you're praying that God will help you, but you're thinking about McDonald's. You're praying about somebody, but you're thinking about where you're going to go in a little bit. Oh, I got to go catch the sale at the, at the mall. I got to go here. Uh, I got to go there. But you're not uh, concentrating in what God wants us to concentrate in. You see, even back in when the disciples' days, amen, there was no television. There was no radio. And they were still distracted. They were still distracted from things because instead of praying, what, what did Jesus catch them doing? 
They're asleep. He says, no, wake up. Wake up. Wake up and pray. Because you're going to need this. He took them with him for he, they could see, hallelujah, what does Jesus do when he's in the mountain? And he wasn't sleeping. But he was praying. He was praying and asking the Father to help him through what he was going to go through. Because you've got to remember that he was flesh. And the Spirit of God, hallelujah, was upon him and giving him strength. But he was praying. And, and, and at the moment, hallelujah, when he was praying, God was giving him strength. And this is the moment that we need to. Because when we follow Jesus, we feel pain. We feel suffering. Oh, maybe you guys don't, but I do. We go through pain. We go through suffering. We go through situations. We go through changes in our body. And sometimes they're not good changes. Sometimes, hallelujah, they're, they're attacks from the enemy. But why does the enemy attack, hallelujah, if we know that Jesus lives in us? Even though Jesus lives in us and the Spirit lives in us, if we're not equipped, hallelujah, with our prayer, if we're not equipped with our fasting, if we're not equipped with the communication, what Jesus Christ wants us to be, we have an open door. And the enemy will sit in and make your life miserable. He will start picking on you. You know when your children pick on you? They want something and they're just like. You know what I'm saying? They'll start picking on you. They'll start hitting that target for you to say yes. And that's what the enemy does. The enemy hits that target until you give up and say, okay then, all right. But this is not what we're going to do. We're going to go to prayer. We're going to ask God, hallelujah, and we're going to believe in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. In Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, amen, it says this. It says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. Verse 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6, one God and Father, all, uh, it says, of all who is able, all and through all and in you all. Amen? Who's above? Amen? Over here is different. Yeah, above. Amen. So the thing is, it's here, is there's only one body. Amen? And there's one spirit. There's one Lord, hope, faith, one baptism, one Father, and Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And this body that we have, the Father lives in us and wants us to come alive through prayer, the communication of prayer. Amen. He wants us to come, amen, hallelujah. Let's go to John 7, chapter 7, verse 24. Because he wants us to act, he wants us to recognize that there's only one God. There's only one Father. And as you guys go there, I'm going to read 21 again. It says that, and, and, and back in John uh, 17, you don't have to go there. Just stay right there where I told you, 7, 24. And this is that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the word may believe that you sent me. Amen? That they may believe. Come on. We, are, we know that God, that the Father God sent Jesus, amen, to this earth. Amen? We know that he came and, 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 and was crucified. We know that we came and he paid all pain, all punishment, all sin. He paid it all completely. Amen? We know that. Let's read 724. Judge not accordingly to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Amen. Many times we want to judge by the appearance. Jesus never judged by the appearance. Amen? 
He never did. Remember that man that was, that was, uh, that was crippled, amen, from birth? Never walked as a baby. He grew up in the side of the, of, the, of, the, of the temple, and he was there, and Jesus healed him. He never looked outside, but he charged the inside. Amen? Judge spiritually things by spiritual standards, not by appearances. We got to judge the spiritual things. We got to, uh, 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 by the spiritual standards, amen? So in other words, we got to look inside the soul. We got to look inside their heart. How do you look inside a person's heart? How do you look inside? You're not God? No, but God is going to reveal something to you. So in other words, when you pray and you seek the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to teach you what that person needs. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you she's hurting in this way. She's going through a divorce. She's going through abuse with her husband or, 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 or the wife is abusing the husband. You never hear that, huh? Because there's mean wives out there. They hit their husbands. And they beat them up. And the husbands are all. But they're so macho, they don't want nobody to know. So they just turn the sheik. Hey, I could, I could do this, man. I could do this. But nobody knows if my wife hits me. She's waiting for me with a sartén right there in the corner. And she's going to hit me with a chancla. I remember when my mom would wait for me. I'm going to get you. Watch. I'm going to spank you because you, you're a bad boy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. No, I'm not bad. No. But she would wait for me with this long branch. Thin, skinny, long. About from here to Sister Maria right there. I could get you right there, but I was always too fast. I was gone. I, I know my distance. But you see, God came to heal our hearts. God came to take everything away from our physical bodies, amen, and, and heal our spirit. He wants us to know that, that, that by prayer and by us being with Jesus, amen, and walking with him, hallelujah, we're going to glorify his name. How do we draw close to him? We, we, by praying, by fasting, by seeking God, and by honoring God, by glorifying his name. But how do we glorify his name, Pastor? By being the best testimony to the world that it's possible to be. Amen. By being the best testimony out to the world. In other words, be ready. In 2 Timothy, it says, hallelujah, to be ready in the word of God. Amen, hallelujah. You don't have, you know, I, I, I talk to people, and, 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 and the first thing they tell me, I want to be a pastor, hallelujah. I want to be an evangelist, hallelujah. And I want to be this, and I want to be that. I says, why do you want to be a pastor? Why do you want to be a pastor? Tell me, why do you want to be a pastor? Oh, because, you know, uh, um, 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 they don't know why. I said, you know what we go through? Persecution. We go through pain. We go through suffering. We go through people talking about us. We go through people doing this and doing that. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. But of all, we got to show our compassion. Of all, we got to show our love. But all, we got to still pray for them. Because the Bible says, pray for those that persecute you. Amen. Pray for those that talk about you. Pray for those that kick you in the spirit. Pray for those that drag you in the spirit. But we still got to pray for them because that's what Jesus wants us to do, is to love them like the way he loved everybody else. Amen. Jesus came to this earth, amen, hallelujah, and he didn't have a good walk. He didn't have a beautiful walk. He had a terrible walk. He had a walk that he has to walk through spiritual thorns, through spiritual rocks, through spiritual logs, hallelujah. And there was persecution, there was pain, there was suffering, there was a load that he had to take to the world, to the cross, but he did it. And he taught us how to do these things. All we got to do is pray and seek him and follow him. Be the best that we could be. When we walk with Jesus, for that way our testimony will be clean. And after our testimony is being clean, we could be able to witness to somebody. We could tell somebody that Jesus loves them. We could tell somebody that the Savior is coming soon. 
we could tell somebody, hallelujah, you don't have to be behind a pulpit. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be an evangelist. You don't got to be a prophet. You don't got to be nothing. All you got to be is answer the call of God, hallelujah. And answering the call is doing everything that he tells us to do. Let's walk in obedience. Let's walk in his commandments. Let's walk in his righteousness. Oh, that's too hard, Pastor. I can't do that. And then we're the ones that dirty our testimony. Who likes to wear white shirts and blouses? And they look nice, right? You know, but at the end of the day, they don't look too good. Amen. <laughs> First thing we got that little wind and dust, you, your, your blouse gets a little, it's not white no more. And then you eat menudo or mole. <laughs> or chile corrado, you know what I mean? You, you hit, oh, there's a spot. But God wants us to erase that spot by walking with him. Even we put our garments on. When we come to the Lord, he dresses us with a garment. And that garment was white as snow. It was sinless. Because we give everything to him. And he says, I'm going to clean your sleigh. You don't got nothing on you today. I washed your clothes and I put it right back on. And you're good. But he wants us to keep it clean. He wants us to keep it clean. How many mothers here take care of their babies? They take them a bath and, then, and you tell them, don't not get dirty. And then they go outside and they see a pot of water. Oh, they love water, man. And they just go. Whoosh. I got grandsons that like to do that. Amen. I guess all the grandsons and all the grandkids like to do that. But we have to give God glory. I think I was in 22, right? And the glory which you give me, I have given them. That they may be one just as we are one. So Jesus was telling his father, hey, we're all going to be one together. Amen. It says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect and one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and I have loved them as you have loved me. So there's in red letters, Jesus is telling the father that, hey, they're going to be perfect. I want them to be perfect. So I got to tell them. And we got to walk in, 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 in perfectness. And you know, and, and, and I, I looked up that word per, a, a perfect. And it says that once we're perfect, we're good. We always will never be perfect until that day that God calls us. And if we're ready, we're gone. We're with him. He says, when you're done all your tasks, and you did it all, and, 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 and there it is. I, I, I'll pick you up. But we have to just be ready all the time. We have to have our spirit ready to God. We have to be open to the Lord. We have to walk with him. We have to push. Because there is a devourer out there that is standing and it wants to hit us. Amen. Let's go to John 12, 32. And the Bible says in John 12, 32, and I, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, 
will draw all peoples to myself. Amen. Jesus was saying, after he uh, lifts himself up up there, in other words, he had to he had to die to go to heaven, for he could draw all people unto him. He had to go to Calvary. He had to go crucifixion. He had to go through through everything that he went through, for he could pass in the body and live in the spirit, and be resurrected, and then he could bring all people unto him. As we come in to his to this to this play here, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, as we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, our God, hallelujah, we die in the flesh and we live in the spirit. And we start walking in the spirit. Amen. We start learning how to talk in the spirit. We start learning how to live in the spirit. We start learning how to obey things in the spirit because that's what the spirit man is. The spirit man is dead. The, the, the carnal man is dead, excuse me, and the spirit man is alive. So the spirit man has to overcome the carnal flesh. And by prayer and by reading the word, we're going to, find out that, 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 that the Holy Spirit wants to allow us to walk in the Spirit. So I'm going to read a little bit more, okay? So it says this, in 34, it's not up there, but if you, you're in the same page, just follow me. The, the people answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains, for, remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light. Okay? Darkness, lest darkness overtakes you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Well, he have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. Amen. We all have the light. Amen. Oh, there's a couple of amens. I said, we all have the light. Amen. Amen. So because we have the light, the Bible is saying that we have to live with the light. So in other words, we have to walk with the light. Who's the light? Jesus. The Holy Spirit. So we cannot be in the light and then tomorrow want to walk in the dark. That's not a combination. You're not making a river flow. It's all pure vanilla. Why the snow? Jesus. We're walking the light. We have to stay in the light. So how is the complication, how is the, the painful, how is the suffering, how is all these things in this world play a part in our life when we have to walk in the light? Because we have to pray. Because those things are here in this earth. But because they're here, it doesn't mean that we're overpowered by them or by the things of the world. We have to live in the spirit if we have to pray, we have to fast, we have to be communicated with our word, with our Bible, amen, hallelujah, with our brothers and our sisters, amen, iron sharpens iron. We don't go and talk to our brother and sister to knock them down, but we go over there to lift them up. But then there's sometimes, amen, hallelujah, uh, 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 that we don't want to listen. You know, you got, you know, I know I, I had a couple kids uh, when they were growing up. I would tell them, no, son, don't do that. No, honey, don't do that. But they'll do it and they'll get hurt. I told you not to do that. But they have to learn. Amen. But God still loves us. God will still love us. God it, 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 it will still lift you up. God will, will still bring you closer to him. But we have to ask God. But see, what happens is, 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 is because we want to live like Adam and Eve, amen? So when we make a mistake, we want to hide from God. 
We want to run away from the people. We want to run away from the people that really love us, amen. And we want to get new friends out in the world thinking that they love us. They don't love you. They're in the darkness. How can they give you something good? Hallelujah. They can't give you nothing good. All they have got to do is give you something bad. Because they're in the darkness. They're blind. The Bible says, how can a blind man lead a, a, another man? We cannot run to the world to get advice. We cannot run over there. Oh, I, I like to go over there because, because they charge me $3.50 an hour, but I, I, I come out happy. You don't come out happy. You come out sad because you already wasted $3.50. But instead of coming to Jesus, instead of coming to the Word, instead of coming to the brother where the light is, hallelujah, and allow God to use the brother, to use the pastor, to use, hallelujah, the sister around us to build us up. But we think that they're hitting us and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're stabbing us and we think they're talking about us and they don't understand us. We say, you don't understand me. No, we do understand. Is that the enemy is not allowing you to understand? Because if you understand, you're going to be set free. And it's really simply what the Bible says. If, if you're in the light and the light lives in you, then stay in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in an example. Jesus, hey, Jesus was an honorable man. Amen. He honored his father. He obeyed his father. He prayed and asked God, even though it got so heavy, even though, you know, that when he would pray, the Bible says that, that, that he would sweat blood. We sweat, but his was blood. His sweat was blood. It was deep. It was heavy. People say walking with Jesus is the most, the most easiest thing. It's it's it's. it's, it's when you walk with Jesus and you don't have him all over you and you don't pray and you don't allow the Holy Spirit to become all over you, it's going to be hard for you. And I'm going to tell you, even though you have him all over you, there's going to come a time where God's going to say, I I I I'm sorry, son. I'm sorry, daughter. But I got to just lift this up from you. Because I want to see what you're going to do. People say, hallelujah, well, how can you take something away from me? God, I'm not taking it away from you. Because I want you to realize, because everything's going good, I want you to realize that you're not doing the work, I am doing the work. God is always working for us. When you did a good job at your work and you got a raise, they give you a raise because Why? Because Jesus gave you the strength to do good work for your company. You thought of something they didn't think about, and they liked the idea, and they said, you know what? I'm going to give you two, three dollars, man. I don't believe in dollars. I believe in double digits, amen. And I mean, there's people here that they could testify in that. They got their jobs in double digits. And they're not done yet. God's not done yet. God's still preparing you for the next, next money. Amen? But we just have to be with him. Amen? And John, and John, and John uh, uh, 12, 32, I, I wrote this, it says, and, and uh, it says, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Amen. So Jesus, when he was crucified, when he lifted up, he draw people close. Amen. Exalting Jesus in your life and serving to draw people to him. So in other words, what God wants us to do. I know that's my key right there. Amen. But let me finish real quick. When we... Draw ourselves closer to God, to Jesus. When we draw ourselves and we dedicate our lives, 
our lives to Jesus. And we say, uh, uh, the world is not of me no more, but I'm going to be dedicated to Jesus. In other words, when you pray and you fast, amen, and you dedicate yourself in Jesus, now, hallelujah, uh, God's going to bring some people, hallelujah, that need him, hallelujah, and he's going to draw them close to you, hallelujah. And not close to you to go over there and, and just get Starbucks and talk about other things, but to sit down with them and share the love of Jesus Christ because he wants to be lifted up. He wants to be glorified. Hallelujah. And this is how when we draw close to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, hallelujah, and tells us what to say, what to do, and what to give them, and he even tells us what they're going through. Hallelujah. And you hit that moment, and that person just, just crumbles down. How did you know? I didn't. Jesus just told me. You see, I've been praying, I've been fasting, and I've been asking God to send me somebody. And this week, he sent you to me. And when he sent you to me, he had given me everything, hallelujah, that I needed to know about you, hallelujah. And then, then, hallelujah, I started working, and God started moving in my life. It wasn't me, because I, I don't know nothing, I messed everything up. But God through me works, hallelujah, and the Spirit of God works, hallelujah, and this is how it works. When we come into communication with him, in other words, when we pray and when we fast, hallelujah, and when we give him honor and when we give him glory, hallelujah, and we give him time, hallelujah, and we read, hallelujah, the glorification of Jesus Christ will come through us and go to the people and touch their hearts and heal their hearts. That's why sometimes, hallelujah, when you go pray for a sick person in the hospital, hallelujah, God's timing, hallelujah, God saves, hallelujah, he prepared you, you told you, hallelujah, you prepared yourself, you went to that hospital, they got healed. But the thing is that sometimes we don't listen. We want to do our thing. I want, I want to pray, I want to fast, when I want to pray and fast. See, every time when we do that, there's always a situation happening that's already happened. Why? If he wants to prepare us before. Amen? Exalt Jesus in your life and serve him to draw people to him. So in other words, let's get right with God. Let's get closer to God. Let's become humble to him. This call to repentance and say, Lord, shake myself. Shake what we need to do. Shake what, I, what, what, what am I looking to you? Because I know you look at me, Lord, and you look at me with no sin. But what is it in my life that we need to correct? What is it in our life that we need God to change? What is it in our life that we need to let go? What is it in our life, hallelujah, that we got to say, hey, this got to go? This is about the time where, where people go in their closets, amen, hallelujah, and they start looking, and they say, like, okay, summer's almost over. Uh, I got to get rid of that, 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 get rid of that. There's like 10 dresses you got to get rid of, uh, a couple pants, you know what I mean? You want to you wanna get rid of them because you, you want to come in with a new Amen? So we have to prepare ourselves for the new season that's coming. We got to prepare ourselves. We got to go into our lives, into our, into our private heart, and we got to go into our and say, Lord, what, are, what is in this place that don't belong to you and that's not of you and, and, and it's just hanging on too long in my closet? I got to get rid of it. It's been hanging on in my life. I got to get rid of it. Let me let it go, Lord. And you got to go in there and just get it and let it go. For God could give you more in the next one. Amen? All right, just to wrap it up. Let's go to, uh, let's go back to 17 real quick. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to stop at 23 right here. And I in them, I in them and you and me, that they may be made perfect and once and one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them 
as you have loved me. My Father, I desire, and this is Jesus speaking to the Father. Father, I desire that they also, who you give me, may be with me. His attention for us to be with them, to go with them to heaven. He says, who, he says, where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have, and, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with with which you love me may be in them and I in them Amen. Jesus is pleading Jesus is crying Jesus is talking Jesus is interceding for us he says commit yourself to the unity of the church he says commit yourself to the unity uh, uh, to the to the unity of the church. We are the church. Commit ourselves to God. Commit ourselves, our ways to the living God. To let God move in our lives, to let God be the comfort of our lives, to let God, hallelujah, to be the righteous man in our life, to let God guide us and protect us and give us what we need. Amen? He says, Lord Jesus, I'm going to read this again. Lord Jesus, and you, I have peace. How many of you walk in peace? Amen. In the, in the world, I may experience suffering. Who experienced suffering? And pain. But I will be of good cheers. Because you have overcome the world. God doesn't want us to, to, to experience suffering. God doesn't want us to experience pain. God doesn't want us to, to experience the, 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 the hardships of the world. But be of good cheers. Be of good cheers because you have overcome the world. Jesus has overcame the world. And because Jesus is in us, hallelujah, we have overcame the world. We have overcame God, uh, uh, of the world in here. Satan doesn't have no power over us. We've overcame him because we serve Jesus. Even though he attacks us, but we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't entertain his attacks. If you entertain his attacks, hallelujah, he will come in. But if you stop him, hallelujah, in his tracks and tell him, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, hallelujah. I am a son. I am a daughter of the living God. The God that knocked you out from heaven and threw you to the pit of hell. The God that overcame you. The God that created the universe. That's the God that we serve. And that's the God that we, that we listen to. That's the God that we need to glorify and, and honor, hallelujah, by serving him. Every time we serve God and the day that we wake up and you say, I don't want to serve you today, God, he hurts him. We put ourselves in danger. We open a door for the enemy to say, oh, you don't want to serve him today, huh? All right, well, maybe you want to serve me. Let me hang out with you. John 3, 16, 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheers, I have overcome the world. In him we will have peace. In the world, in other words, when, you, when, when, when we decide we don't want to serve Jesus and we want to do our things our way, you're going to have a lot of tribulation. You're going to have a lot of pain. You're going to have a lot of suffering. You're going to have a lot of things. But we walk in Jesus. We walk in peace. And we remember, hallelujah, that he overcame everything. That he says, be a good cheers. Be happy. Be excited. And know in your heart that God overcame everything. 
There's nothing that the enemy could hold. Give Jesus a clap off for the man. Hallelujah. God is good. And all he wants for us to listen to these red letters. Because it was him speaking and these red letters that he said, follow these, man. Follow these. And you'll be equipped. You'll be in peace. Today, this evening, we could all stand. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if you need prayer today, but if you need prayer, 